Hello, hello, everybody. I'm sure by now you know that uh, I'll do a special show there and there, uh, depending on the developments of the news as the news pass by. Um, I decided that let me do the special show uh, this evening, uh, looking at Lionel Messi, the way he was booed by um, you know the PSG fans, although some of them showed uh, acceptance to Leo Messi. So we want to look at that situation very closely. The show is called TBR SSF Show with me, the Sobri Boys, Ole Fatsi. I'm doing this special show looking at Lionel Messi's situation. I'm sure most of you have seen what happened. Uh, we saw after the game, you know, Messi was cutting a lonely voice, a, a lonely figure, you know, going down to the dressing room. He never, you know, hanged around and then greeted the, fa uh, the fans and so on. Um, I'm sure some people are not happy about that. Why did he do that? Uh, but I think he was justified. And then I, I want to say big up to Leo. Uh, he has shown a, a brave man. Uh, the, the situation was uh, very tense. And the news were picked up. I mean, uh, we, we knew just from last week, uh, according to publications in Spain and, 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 and France, uh, that uh, the, you know, the ultra PSG fans were planning this bull of Lionel Messi. They blame Lionel Messi for all the abuse that is happening in the team. They blame Lionel Messi for not winning the Champions League. And then uh, they blame Lionel Messi for everything. All right. Some of them are arguing that he's getting a lot of money, but it doesn't show. But let's look at the facts very, very closely. Um, I don't know whether it should be Lionel Messi should be blamed or PSG itself. The news are saying PSG and Lionel Messi agreed in December that Ma December or yeah, December that uh, Messi is going to renew his contract, he's going to stay with PSG. For another year or so, then you'll consider uh, how long he stays there. Um, and then apparently they met again, I think, a um, few weeks ago. And then uh, Lionel Messi had all the contracts, the offer on the table. But uh, Messi apparently, he wanted to know the project before he can decide whether he signs with them or not. Now. As the news and the rumors are saying, um, Messi was not happy with the plan or the project of PSG. So as a result, Messi decided not to renew. It is said, the PSG, it is said, remember, this is a rumor. We are not sure about that. Still be tested, still to be tested. Leadership was not happy with that. They started a campaign to discredit Messi. Uh, you know, um, th th that's the rumor, all right? They started a campaign uh, so that it does not appear as if Messi is the one who rejected their offer. It appears as if it's them. So the ultra PSG fans were already planning to boo him especially during their home games, all right? Now, uh, because I expected uh, PSG leadership to come out and defend, especially after what happened uh, over the weekend, all right, after they played Reigns. Now, let's look at the game of Reigns itself, you know, to see if they argue that uh, Messi didn't put his effort. These are the facts of that game. He had two shots on target, two successful dribbles. I got this from uh, one guy who's a Messi fan, a uh, Piers Moru, uh, on Facebook. All right. Uh, five key passes, but I watched the game myself too. Two long uh, balls. Two through balls, two big chances created, four recoveries, and the rating was 7.8 matches ratings. All right. Now, my issue here 
PSG leadership should, should have taken leadership. All right? They offered Mbappe huge influence to the team. All right? And that is creating problems for them. If I, were, I was the president of PSG, I would say to Mbappe, look, you are the next thing to happen in this world. Because you are the next thing to happen, you have the best player in the world today. Learn as much as you can from him and make it clear that Messi is the leader. That would be my approach. Now, Christopher Galtier, two games, he came out. Now, it was left to Christopher Galtier to play that role. He came out and then he said, Mbappe wasn't there. He said to all the players, everybody should run. Not only, everybody should run except Leo. Allow Leo to walk as he does so that we can use him when we attack. And I can tell you, those few games that they played after those statements, you could see even the players such as Danilo, whom I think is one of them who doesn't pass Messi. They were passing him. That was a clear message of leadership as far as I'm concerned. Now, it was left to him to do it instead of leadership of PSG to do it. So that's my argument. Now, we have listened to what Argentinian players said. We know what Pep Guardiola said, has been saying, and is still saying today, that you don't coach Messi, just leave him. You don't give me instruction, just leave him. Then you'll play. Now, the, uh, the Argentinian player said, you know, we won the World Cup because we made it a point that Messi doesn't work. We work for him. Alvarez said, I even assured him that don't run, I'll run for you. And that is why they were good. Paredes, at some point, did warn them and say, you guys, the way you want to use Messi, you're not going to go anywhere. If you want to use Messi, don't allow him to run. Allow him to do whatever he does. Let him walk as he walk, but let us work for him and give him the ball. They don't do it. You go to Barcelona during the time of Pep Guardiola. Pep made it a point, you can ask Thierry Henry, that Messi was the leader of the team. You can ask uh, Ibramovic. They'll tell you, Zlatan. And that maybe makes you to be lethal. And not long ago, because now he's 35 years old, and we saw what he did in the World Cup. Now you go to PSG. You have Mbappe walking at the age of 24, Messi at the age of 25, at 35. As Mbappe walking, you have two people walking. When two people walking, it's easy for any team to press them. To press them. Now, of course, Mbappe does not feel any obliged to run because he has been given that uh, if the, 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 the reports are true, remember some of this news that we get, we are not sure uh, that he has been given a free reign because I need to qualify. I must never talk as if it's a fact, it's certain uh, because we don't know what's happening behind the closed doors. But if that is the truth, if they've given him the cutter blanche, they are to blame. It has nothing to do with Messi. Now, these are the numbers of that game. And if you look at that game, there were three, three if not four, through balls that he gave Mbappe and Mbappe missed them. There were cases where Mbappe should have passed Messi, they could have scored, but he went for the glory. Now, those are the issues that they need to sort out as PSG rather than focusing on Lionel Messi. But let's look at that game. There was no Hakimi. There was no Sergio Ramos. There was no Makinos. The central defense. All right? Instead, there were Danilo, Bernard, and the youngsters there. And, 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 and how do you expect? Now, without Makinos, without Hakimi, Without Ramos, without Soleil, 
Now, what do you expect? They expect Messi to close those positions. That's the question. And the first goal that was caught by Reigns, what happened? Bennett, where was he? Now, are you expecting Messi to go and close there when he's a front man? Now, before they start, when they mention his name, because this plan was known already, they booed him. All right? But big up to him, he went to the game. He played as if nothing happened. He played his game. Of course, he's a human being. Um, he, he showed that uh, he can be affected. That is why he left. At least he never remonstrated. He never retaliated by throwing tantrums. All right. Instead, he decided to respect them without uh, talking to them. So now, those are some of the facts that we need to look at. Um, rather than um, rushing and, 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 and making uh, those accusations. I think those PSG fans, they need to be ashamed of them. Let's look at the numbers. These are the numbers. They are Mbappe, you know, whom they cheered after Messi was booed. The records were saying he did 6.2 when Messi did 7.3 in terms of numbers. And you can imagine you are playing after being harassed so much. You've got children, you've got a wife, all right? And you are being harassed, and then you're expected to play fully. Remember, football is the game of you need to be calm, you need to be happy. And I, I said most of the time, as long as Messi is happy, then you'll see the love of football. You'll see how football is. So now, if they blame him for this, even for the Champions League, you know, we can look at the numbers there. So the numbers will tell you something different. So, you know, I don't think um, it was something called for, all right? And then, um, as I said at some point, that uh, the campaign to discredit Messi has already started. We know about that. And then especially looking at the Ballon d'Or, you know, um, you know, there is an attempt to make sure that he doesn't win the eighth Ballon d'Or. And guess what? It's already loading the eighth Ballon d'Or, all right? Now, you, you know, I'm not saying Mbappe is not a big star. Mbappe is a big star and then he's got a future. Haaland is a big star, he's got a future. But they're not at Messi's class. Because at this point in time, uh, Messi at this time, he was a phenomenon, all right? And then I want to share something that uh, Rodriguez said, you know, um, you know, James Rodriguez, a former Madrid player. Uh, what he said about uh, being a, a, man, a, a Real Madrid player. Uh, being a Real Madrid player, you're not allowed to, to talk well. Um, no, no, this is not. Um, you are not allowed to talk well about what is happening at the Barcelona camp. Um, instead, um, you are expected to talk well about um, what is happening um, in, in other teams, not but not at Barcelona camp. The truth, they become very economical when it comes to the truth, all right? Um, if, you, if, if, you, if, if you are a, um, a, a Madrid person, this is what Rodrigo says. All right. He says, when you are a Real Madrid, it's hard to tell certain truth. For instance, it's hard to say Leo Messi is the best player in history. It's hard to say that. Why? Because you are at Madrid. All right. And well, I saw some of the people saying maybe Messi, when it comes to Ballon d'Or, it was Messi versus Pires, not necessarily Messi versus Ronaldo. Now, these are the probabilities so far in terms of uh, who's supposed to win the Ballon d'Or, all right? Messi is already leading by far, 65, 65%, followed by Haaland, 15%, Mbappe, 8%, um, Benzema, 3%, and, and um, uh, Rashford, 2%, all right? Uh, maybe it's just, this is just a campaign to ensure that Messi doesn't, uh, uh, you know, uh, win this Ballon d'Or. 
As I said, I think the campaign has already started to discredit Lionel Messi to ensure that, uh, you know what, um, the man doesn't win this. Um, and then, uh, and a big up to him, big up to Messi. Uh, he showed very uh, uh, strong character, you know, by, you know, by playing under those difficult circumstances. I can imagine, you know, you play and then uh, people, there's all these sorts of news. Now, during the week, there was a, a publication in France which was saying Messi decided to walk away. Uh, at them, um, what is this? Um, at the, at the, at the, at the, at the training, and then it had to take his father to come out and say, no, that's not true. Uh, you know, and and it's a fake news. And uh, Christopher Galtier again came up to Messi's defense to say, no, 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 Messi had discomfort uh, during training. And then he asked to be released, you know, and then uh, and thereafter, I think he joined them two days and then that's it. So there was nothing. There was no nothing against uh, um, the coach or the, the members of the squad. So, you know what? Uh, we don't know what's happening. And then, as I say, you know, I'm happy that uh, you have people like Sergio Roberto from Barcelona who are saying, you know what? You better come back home. Uh, come back to uh, Barcelona because um, Messi should play where he's being loved. He should not play where there are doubts about him and so on. And then um, Sergio says, we are waiting for you, you know. The treatment that you are getting at uh, PSG or uh, Paris, you don't deserve that. Well, it's going to be a long, long, long three months for him to, to, to be, you know, to, 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 to finish up his contract. And then come the end of the contract, I think Messi should, uh, you know, uh, say goodbye to uh, PSG, and then uh, go and then and, and play where he's loved most. And then the other thing that uh, I've picked up as I was searching the news, uh, they were saying, you know, Messi is, is forever grateful to uh, Barcelona as a team. That is why he never thought that one day he will leave the team. Uh, he never thought because. These are the guys when he had his own uh, sicknesses, you know, they, you know, they sacrificed a lot, they invested a lot in him. So he wants to repay them. That is why I feel that is the team that he feels he, he can go to. Uh, I know that he can go to uh, Man City anytime because of Pep Guardiola. Uh, but, you know, I like the way Pep treat the situation. Let's allow Messi to make his own decision. I'm not going to put any pressure to ask him to come to join Man City. He said that I've never asked Messi to join any team that I coach. So, yeah, so those are some of the things that we need to look at. And then, um, yeah, and then uh, uh, let Messi finish the contract and then leave uh, PSG. And I hope he can join uh, um, uh, Barcelona. And then uh, that's it, so that he, he, he is happy. Now, as I talk about Barcelona, I just want to share some of the news. Uh, remember, there was El Clasico this past weekend, uh, of which um, they've done very well as far as that is concerned. They won 2-1, um, uh, Barcelona. They scored three goals because the, the, the goal for Real Madrid was an own goal, and then which gives them an advantage now. They have 12 points now. A difference, although there's still a lot of games left, about 12 games, there's a lot to go, all right? Uh, but at least it gives them now some comfort because Real Madrid is their, their, their real threat. And then, uh, yeah, so I watched the game, very beautiful game. I really enjoyed what I saw. And then, uh, yeah, so they've done well. Now let's go to the referee story. I want to go back to that one because... This is, this is the story which I don't know whether it's aiming at derailing Barcelona or, or what, uh, you know, the referee scandal. And then this is something that happened between 2016 to 2018, where Barcelona paid a company called DSS NIL 95, 1.4 uh, million euros, all right? And then this um, company is owned by Jorge, Jorge Maria Enrique. Uh, Nagrera, all right, who was at the helm, was the vice president.
president of Spanish Football Referring Committee. And then according to reports, this company would send Barcelona information for management uh, to instruct the players of how best to behave towards the referees, okay? It's a consultancy, but I, I believe all the teams are doing it. And I'm sure that the defeat of Real Madrid was a, a, a sweet revenge for Laporta. Because Laporta wants to show to Perez that I can stand your, your attack. I'm prepared to fight you. Remember, this uh, case is going to go uh, to, to, to the live wire. It's, it's, it's going to be very interesting how it's going to pan out. Apparently, it has taken a legal nature now. Because if anything, if probably they are found guilty, people are branding so many sanctions. Some of the sanctions, they can be relegated and so on. They may lose some of the titles that they won. But look at that period, very interestingly. It was the period of Batameo. And remember, Batameo were very close with Pires. Uh, and and Tebas, Tebas, the, the president of uh, La Liga. And Tebas didn't see anything wrong done by Batameo irrespective of the fact that he brought the team into disrepute, according to reports, because it still has to be proved that he really did, did put the, the, the team into disrepute, you know? And we don't know how it's going to unfold. At, at some point, we were told that uh, Barcelona were contemplating of taking legal action. We don't know. And then, uh, but um, remember, when all these things happened, it was not the time of Laporta. It was the time of Batameo. So that should be considered, that should be taken into consideration. So now all these things, they don't happen in isolation. They they, they happen, but uh, you know, they, they come from somewhere and somebody should look at them very closely. And then uh, the other thing that I want to show you, um, you know, uh, we have seen Halat has scored hat trick and Halat has uh, surprised everybody. Uh, we've seen that. And then, uh, but um, I'm sure you know as much as I know, uh, I want to share with you uh, the players who scored hat trick before. Uh, you know, big stars. They scored hat trick against who? And then I'll show you uh, the, the, the hat trick that Lionel Messi scored. Uh, the first hat trick. All right. Now you, you have Ronaldo scoring his first hat trick against Newcastle. And then uh, you've got uh, this one, uh, Bahia. Uh, against Bahia, and then uh, you've got Neymar against Gurani, uh, and then uh, you've got um, Mbappe against Reigns. Messi scored hat trick against Real Madrid. Real Madrid. So that's something that you need to take into consideration. He scored against Real Madrid, and uh, not like, and it was Real Madrid. The Real, you know, during those times, I think Zidane was there. So, you know, so. So, so those are some of the things that you need to take into consideration. And I always say to people, remember when uh, Messi was 24, at Mbappe's age, he had about four Ballon d'Ors already, uh, Lionel Messi. Well, I hear Mbappe at some point saying, um, yeah, Messi's got one in terms of the World Cup. I also have one. Uh, so I think he was insinuating that we are equal. Uh, but I don't think it was supposed to have come to that level. Uh, you shouldn't have said that, that we are equal. Don't compare yourself. You know what I like, what Messi does? Messi says, I know exactly what I can do, uh, but um, I don't like speaking about myself. I want people to talk about me. So now I've given you the facts around, is this booing of Lionel Messi justified or not? Or is just uh, something else? If there is anything to read to these rumors that uh, PSG hierarchy were not happy about the fact that he didn't renew. So they want to seize the opportunity to take lead and discredit him. I'm not sure. This is, these are rumors. And remember, rumors, you know, unless they're tested true. So, but sometimes there's no smoke without fire. So that is why I'm putting those facts. I want you out there to make your own decision. Does real does Lionel Messi deserve this win that he's getting? Or somebody else should take the flag? That was the Messi special or the special show of
Hello, everybody. My name is the Sobre Boys Wanafatsi from a TBR Solution. TBR Solution is a financial company that helps people to be financially savvy. I'm sure these days you are aware that prices are very up in terms of petrol, in terms of goods and services, prices are very, very high. Now, these days, we are on a campaign to help those members of GPF or government employees, especially if you are 55 years old or above, and you are contemplating to resign or go on pension in three months time, give us a call or drop us a WhatsApp, then we'll call you back so that we help you to get your money expeditiously, you know, as compared to sometimes people get their money after a long time. We will then transfer your money from GPF to Alan Gray, whom we have a relationship with. And the good news is, once the money has been transferred, you will choose how much you want to earn. If you happen to pass on, your spouse will also get the same amount. Then if it happens that both of you passes on, you would have appointed or selected uh, beneficiaries. It could either be your children or anyone else. And there's nothing like age limit that they must be 22 or below. Even if they're above 22, they'll be able to get the, 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 the inheritance from you. So that's how flexible it is. And then um, I know that sometimes people, they worry about medical aid and all that. We also have with other partners who assist you to get a medical aid. So if you want to learn more and get more information pertaining to that, just drop us a WhatsApp, we'll therefore come back to you. I thank you.